All right, folks, we're waiting on some parts for some of our other projects. So we're going to go back here to the back corner of our shop on another project that we've been kind of poking at in between, in between jobs. Okay. Back here in the back corner, we got our little Cessna 140. Uh, doing some fabric work on the wings, freshening them up, getting them ready for a paint job. We painted the fuselage previously. Now we're doing some work on firewall forward, freshening it up. What I did was an alternator inspection on the drive coupling and found that it was in dire need of replacement. That's why I removed the alternator back here. I inspected the tack cable to see if the seal inside this tack drive was any good. And the tack cable did show some signs of some oil migrating up into it. Let's see if I can get a picture of that. There's some oil migrating up into the tack cable. So why this drive is assembly is very accessible. Went ahead and pulled this off and put a new gray lock seal in there. Did just a standard gray lock seal. This is the old one. Just popped it out, ordered a new one. All right, this is our alternator off of our 140. This has a service bulletin that requires inspection of the coupling, the drive coupling every 500 hours. Um, a quick inspection with this thing on the aircraft. You can reach your fingers in here and these cooling fans, you can sit and turn these with your fingertip and see if there's excessive rotation. If there's excessive rotation like this one, you can see I'm holding the drive gear st uh, steady, holding the drive gear solid. Turn this cooling fan as excessive play. If you look at the shaft, you can see there's a re retainer on this coupling. You can see how much slop there is in that assembly. Here's our service bulletin. It goes into detail about the inspection, the intervals, the applicable models. There's cotter pin in there and nut. We'll remove that cotter pin, the nut, and take this drive gear off the shaft. Uh, this nut should be torqued to, I believe the paperwork says 175 to 200 inch pounds. Cotter pins will be trashed. Oh, well. No need to put this in a vise and clamp this down to untorque this nut because this nut's not even tight. Set that off to the side. Take this drive gear off. That's a rag. Drive gear. Bushing should slide right up. Yep, there's a bushing. Here's the carrier and the coupling. You can see these things are a mess. Okay. In the service bulletin, it gets you. Describes that there's any damage to this area uh, to replace the carrier and the bushings as an assembly and discard this. I'm just going to toss this in the trash can. Now, 
give this a quick inspection. The service bulletin also says this uh, Here in line five, it says, do not remove the hub unless replacement is required. And this is the hub assembly. This one's still in very good shape. We're not going to do anything with this. Stuff a quick visual inspection. From a local area uh, parts supplier, we ordered a new carrier and two new bushings. These are the 63050 bushings. And this is the associated matching carrier. Service bulletin on page three gives you a nice picture. Figure one is the model of coupler that we're dealing with. Gives you a nice picture of how the final assembly should be done. Take note that these protrusions that are facing the dry shaft are the tops are towards the coupler, the gear itself. These protrusions will go into the coupler like this with the gear on the side to match the picture. To match the picture. Put the coupler down in the carrier down in place and we'll sign the bushing down in place. And with these oriented correctly drop them down into place. Get nice and snug as they should. Get that assembly in place. Next, I'm going to put my drive gear right over top. Put my nut onto the shaft. The service bulletin calls out that I can torque this nut between 175 to 200 inch pounds. Start off with 175, see if my cotter pin holds lined up, and then go up to 200. If I go up to 200 and I can't get a uh, cotter pin hold to line up with the castellations of the nut, it says to replace the nut. <laughs> Vice has got a set of aluminum jaws that I can clamp this in very gently and it won't mar up the, uh, the steel gear. I'm going to clamp this in to get in the vise 
torque this nut up here. All right, as my luck has it, I started at 175, and two of these cancellations were covering the hole, and I went up to 200 inch pounds, and I still don't have enough of a hole exposed to put a cotter pin in, so I'm gonna have to go get a new nut, and we'll retorque it. The second nut I found, torqued it up, same problem, it wouldn't work. Finally, the third nut that I was able to locate, torqued up, and I can get the uh, castellation lined up with the hole with the shaft. So now I'm able to safety it. Nothing fancy with this cotter pin, just standard aviation techniques. The safety. There you have it, the coupling, the drive coupling has been replaced on the alternator. A very simple repair. As you can see, the coupling is nice and solid and we did the same test we did at the beginning where I hold these cooling fans and I rotate the gear. You can see it's very, very solid. The only slot would be right here between the hub and the carrier very very little see that right there so I'm holding these cooling fins down here so if I hold these cooling fins almost no motion at all so you guys that own your own aircraft pilots doing a pre-flight don't be afraid to ask your mechanic to show you how to how to take a take a, a look at these a quick overview you'll dismount it into the engine the accessory case drive gears are going to be holding this gear here fairly solid so you can just take your fingers down here on these cooling fins and move that fan and check for excessive play again don't be afraid to ask your mechanic to show you how to inspect this visually as a pre-flight as a preventive maintenance uh, every time you do oil change you name it very simple fix very easy to do I got the alternator installed back on this C90 and you can see the cooling fins in here and you can see if you use this fin and this casting as a reference you can see how much play that 
that's in that carrier. That's all the play that should be in there. If you have any more travel than that, then this coupling that's inside here really needs to be inspected. Now, this, this here is not a, an official inspection technique. This is just to give you an understanding of the mechanics involved in this drive coupling assembly. Uh, but feel free to talk to your mechanic, get his recommendations, her recommendations on inspecting this. Uh, if th this outside inspection, if this is suitable for their, uh, if it's suitable to them to do this type of inspection, this outside inspection is not part of the service bulletin recommendations. But I found that this is, for me, this has become very effective as a quick identify, indication of the health of this drive coupling. Now, this outside inspection by no means replaces the 500-hour inspection of taking this apart and physically looking at these uh, uh, bushings in this drive coupler. But this just gives you an idea of the mechanics that's involved here.